Today I'm going to show you how we did a stained concrete floor and logo for Ballast Point. This is an old warehouse and they're putting a restaurant right in the middle of an old warehouse. Mm -hmm. and it was actually an industrial facility. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that tile and all kinds of stuff, they tore the tile up and then left a ton of tile grout and you had to, it was your job to grind all that stuff up. Yeah, so then we come in and again, typically what we start with here are, if it's okay, we can get away with it, is it like a 30 and 40 grit diamond. We live in like a really hard area of concrete in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so we were dealing with new concrete and old concrete butted up against each other. We started off with a 30-40 grit medium bond diamond. Mm -hmm. Medium bond meaning it's in between hard and soft. You can kind of really? <laughs> <laughs> you can kind of get away with a lot more. Maybe not get as be best of a cut, but you can get away with your diamonds. Yeah, um, lasting. If you, if you use the wrong bond of diamonds, the diamonds just wear out in immediately. Immediately. So you kind of have to give up some um, time. You have to give up how how easy it is to cut for diamonds that maybe don't cut as good, but they're not gonna wear out immediately. Correct. So this was a, we had a lot of glue, we had a lot of mortar from, from um, we had VCT there previously, we had ceramic tile. They leveled the floor too, so it was like an, it was like an inch of grout in some spots. Oh, tremendous, I forgot about that. And within one of those sections, it was a valley. Mm -hmm. So they just essentially pulled self-leveling mortar. Yeah. And then we had to, Oh man, we got jackhammers out of there. We did, yeah. I for, totally forgot about that. Yeah. If you go to Harbor Freight Tools, there is this <laughs> awesome tool that is, um, it's about five feet long. Yeah. You put it on a compressor, put a blade on the end of it, and just hold that thing, and it will. It's basically like an air hammer. Yeah, it's a little jackhammer. It's a jackhammer that you can stand up and do. You have to think of it this way it's a, an old warehouse, and they're putting a bar right in the middle of it. So they had to cut trenches over to the bar to get their plumbing into there. Mm -hmm. And you're having to deal with these trenches of new concrete next to old concrete. Mm -hmm. And the new trenches that they poured, for some reason, never get put back in their level. They're always like, they're always like, they're either humped or they're too low. Yeah. And so you can never take your $50,000 machine and just, just freaking, <laughs> yeah, just destroy it. <laughs> Sprint onto a, <laughs> onto a hump in the middle of a floor. It yeah. just tears it to pieces. So what you have to do is, Again, we spend as much time as we can on that initial grind, getting off everything we can on flat floors. Then we moved into the to the new concrete that butted it, got all that, everything we could there. It's mm -hmm. at this point, after that 30, 40 grit diamonds, we could do everything we can with the machine. We then come in with handwork and a ton of handwork. Yeah, all those, all those trenches are done by hand. All those trenches are done by hand because we have to have an avenue for that machine to move on to. Um, you have to level the plane so that the machine can just drive across it. Correct. When we try to make these transitions, you're gonna see full scale aggregate transition into salt and pepper. It looks cool though, I like it. I, I think it's cool because when you walk in and you see that through our stained and sealed concrete, you can just kind of see like, I just think it's cool to see how concrete is made and you go from seeing cream all the mm -hmm. way down to like fully aggregate in like a little span. Yeah. And yeah. I know it might not be aesthetic, no, cool. aesthetically pleasing, but it's I enjoy. I think it's cool to look at. I mm -hmm. think I think it's cool to see how things work. You know, I thought was, the timeline on this job was really tight, so I thought it was kind of kind of funny that like there was this exterior patio that was brim finished, and they wanted it to match the inside, so mm -hmm. they asked you to grind the brim finish off. So you're out there because that was new concrete with your fifty thousand dollar machine, and mm -hmm. y'all are pushing that around outside. We're never outside with that equipment. Right. It just seemed weird, and um. And then also, though, they had poured this, like, massive concrete thing out there that was a countertop. But it was, like, this big island thing, all one piece of concrete. And then mm -hmm. they asked you to grind the top of that, too. And that was super hard. <laughs> and, again, for you guys that don't know, when you take a cup wheel, a metal bonded cup wheel, it wants to chatter on you. And chatter meaning it wants to bounce on, on uneven surfaces. It's spinning really fast one direction. And when you sit it down, it tries to wobble. It tries to wobble. Mm -hmm. And especially when someone did a let's just say we did this tabletop and we did it by hand and we just troweled it by hand What's it didn't that? look like they struck it off so it wasn't perfectly flat right so it was you know wavy and you're trying mm -hmm. to like hold this grinder and so we again we go through 30 40 grit bonded diamonds on the bottom of a hand grinder and it's just chattering all around it's rough and then we actually move up and 
go through all the stages yeah. on this countertop as well. That turned out really cool. It was cool. So then once you finish grinding, it's ready for we're time for us to stain the job, man. The staining process is pretty simple. We just use an acetone-based dye on this job. Acetone-based dyes are extremely flammable. Yeah. And extremely fumy. Mm -hmm. Typically, we want to be the work area to be ourselves, yeah. which is very hard to do. It's hard to do that in a commercial job, but when we pull that stuff out, though, we get it. We get it. We get it. Because <laughs> people don't want to be around it. And we go in, as far as, we, we even look at open flames. We look at kitchens as far as mm -hmm. gas ranges. We look at everything possibly that we can do. We do, yeah. We always always go into, like, there was a kitchen right like adjacent to where we were working, and we always go in there and turn all the gas lines off. Mm -hmm. We don't even turn the pots off. We just turn the gas lines off. Go to the back of the machine, turn, yeah. turn, turn the gas off. We also use air scrubbers as well right yeah we we always bring an air scrubber and kind of and that pulls air out and it pumps air out of the room and then pulls it in through a window so mm -hmm. it's a nice setup for that mm -hmm. and um so anyways we spray the whole thing with acetone based dye and it, it really turned out really good it looked awesome so acetone based dye is different than an acid stain acid stains are really popular on youtube mm. um that's like the search term for some reason um acid stains you spray acid stains on the concrete it creates a byproduct a residue that's on the surface you have to wash off but we're using acetone-based dye, which is what you use a lot in polished concrete. So we spray that on the concrete, and you have to be careful how you spray it because you can see like the fan marks, the fan pattern or whatever. You have to be really good with how you spray it. But once you get that down, though, it kind of looks like acid stain, and it saves you an entire day in the installation process. And uh, the reason why it looks like it is because, again, we talked about in the prep work, there are hills and valleys and floors. And sometimes that acetone on top will not take as much as it will in the valley. So you get mm -hmm. those hot, you get the variances. It, for some, whenever you have like cream on the concrete, like the creamy part on top, that doesn't take the dye as well as, like it tends to lay on top of that more than it does on mm -hmm. the, the salt and pepper where it kind of penetrates. So you get that really marbly look. It's just like acid stain. I mean, but um, like I said, it's just a one day process, which is awesome for us because we didn't have an extra day on this job. We mm -hmm. had to get it done. Hey, where's the reward box? It's, is it here? It's downstairs. You want to get them? Huh? You want to go get them? Yeah. Right now? Well, I mean, for this award, well, I can you grab pull this it one. You, you can go get the award if you want to. Yeah, it'd be funny. I'll wait on you. <laughs> oh. Nice. It's a little tacky. Let's put it back here. Some fall over. All right. That's just to prove that. We're not lying. Yeah, it really, it really happens. All right, so where were we were talking? <laughs> this is from the ASCC, and this one's from Coatings Pro Magazine. Coatings Pro. Got the cover. Got the cover for this one. Did we get the cover for Ballast Point? Yeah. Just no, no, we just different. got a big story. We didn't get the cover for Ballast Point. Just okay. the story. Gotcha. Anyway. Yeah, so we got done with the acetone You've been part. on the magazine covers so many times you get mixed. Yeah, right. You know. So after we got the floor stained, um, they did tell us they wanted a logo on this floor. So... Mm -hmm. We went to a, this is a little unorthodox, but we sent the logo off to just a local sign printing shop and they, they cut out a vinyl stencil for us. They did. What we are asking them to do is something that they don't normally do. We want the logo cut out. We don't want the logo. Yeah, we don't want the logo. We want you to cut it, cut it into the sticker and peel out the logo and throw that away. Yep. So they made it the first time and they made it wrong. We yes. picked it up, took it all the way up there, hour up there, and we pull it out and go to stick it on the floor. And like, it was the... It was the backwards. I don't know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. So anyways, we got, we eventually got the sticker with the logo out. Right. And we stuck that to the floor. Mm -hmm. Didn't have any tools to do it. <laughs> we didn't, have never done it before. Didn't really know how to do it. So we just figured we'd tape it to the floor and we kind of peeled off the backside and, and I took a concrete trowel and just <laughs> tried, concrete. I tried to trowel the sticker down to get, keep the now bubbles out got, of it. <laughs> now we've got these awesome... Now we've got these plastic things that are made to do this, like the with squeegee. the squeegees, the squeegee things. We yeah. use trowels. This is a concrete trowel. Yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah, it worked though. It worked. We got it done. It worked. I, I will say though, once we got to like putting the logo down, I noticed that our entire crew all they all joined in. Yeah, because we don't really do it that much, and they were all like, it was just exciting to do something different. It's it, like, it if, you look, so if you look at the video, it's like satisfying. You'll see all of us around it. It was really, really, it was really satisfying to do. Yeah, it's cool. So when we got the sticker stuck down there, we used these pre-valve sprayers. Um, 
It's basically a glass jar that you put the dye in and it turns it into aerosol. Sp spray paint. Spray paint. Correct. Yeah. So we just spray painted the, uh, the dye in there. But that's tricky as well. The reason why that's tricky is you have to hold those things at a 45 degree angle. If you don't, that acetone will spill over everything and ruin <laughs> what you're doing. It was stressful because we knew that we were minutes away from having this job completed with, mm -hmm. the, with the first coat, you know, and we're like, and this is at the entrance and we've already put down the base color of dye. So we're dying on top of that. And we're just, we have these bottles of black and trying to keep them from dripping. And you have to be careful as you're spraying it on the stencil, because if you spray it too heavy in one spot and it like puddles up, it'll go under the stencil. It'll bleed under the stencil. So you have to like be really, you're basically misting the stencil with this stuff and you do layers. Multiple, yeah, layers. That's right. Layers of mist. So you and I were just, yeah. just layering mists until we got it fully covered. Yeah. And we actually didn't try this anywhere else. This is our first time. <laughs> So when it came time to peel that sticker, it was, it was exciting. It was, it was, you know, that is the most satisfying thing in the, anything we do. It is the most satisfying. It is. And we started pulling that sticker. And again, our guys were all standing around and it was fun. And like, you know, even Daryl like jumped in there and started peeling all those old leaves up real quick. It was fun. It was fun to do. And there's a, there's a little bit of a tip there, though. When you adhere this to the floor that's already sprayed around your logo, you want to have that tight with that with that squeegee mm -hmm. but there's so much residual sticker sticker yeah the sticker outside that will never be used right if you press that down too hard there's a chance you're going to pull up and it, it did pull up some of the dye it did pull it, you just chance you're going to pull up dye so you don't need to really press that that piece of just on the edges are all that matter the other can just lay there mm -hmm. if not you're going to like look and say oh the logo looks great but why is it a why is there a big white why is it a big square on why the is logo? it a square <laughs> Yeah. And we had a little bit of a square, but we took dye in those pre bounce sprayers and we kind of feathered that in. It, yep. it worked out pretty good. We went back to our original color. I think we did just a black dye. And then we went back to our original and, and feathered that back in. Yeah. That was fun to do, though. I really, really enjoyed doing that. Mm -hmm. And on an old floor like that, we just assumed there's probably a little bit of moisture coming through it. So we're going to use a breathable, a breathable sealer because it was going to allow the moisture coming from the ground through the concrete. And it's going to be able to come out and evaporate. Because if you use something like a high solids epoxy, it'll trap moisture under it and it'll make it cloud up. It will. So we're using water-based epoxy and we're just going to roll that on the entire surface. Right. And again, as far as when it comes to the water-based, what we use, there's not really much you can go wrong with. No, it's so, it's so easy to put down. Yeah. It's not that bad. It's actually something somebody makes for us. It's, it's a formula that we've kind of tweaked a little bit and we have it packaged with our labels on it. Mm -hmm. It's not something that's for sale, but it's very similar to other, you know, just water-based epoxy. It's all pretty similar. Mm -hmm. And it goes down so easy. You just roll it on the floor and it's kind of hard to mess up. You mm -hmm. don't really see roller marks. It's pretty simple. Cut it in the edges and roll it on the floor. Right. Cut before so we can, we can roll to it. So once we put the epoxy down, that's going to be it for that day. And like I said earlier, we've gone from nothing to finished. And the epoxy is kind of cloudy when we put it down. And as that milkiness comes out of it, you really it's really gratifying to oh, see. Oh, it is. It's a great sight. And after we get done with that, and it, we always love going to the other the back parts of the job where we first started and say, oh, I flashed out. Look at how good it's looking. Because yeah. we want that milkiness to get away from us quick. If it stays, yeah, we're in trouble. It's a little stressful, like painting this like milk on the floor. And um, so we like to go back to the beginning where we started and you can see it clearing out and it, it looks so good. So once we finish the epoxy, we're done for the day. We're going to go home and come back the next morning. And all we have left to do is to put urethane down. We, we did this in like 12 hours, right? Yeah, we, we finished this job. I don't know if you remember. It was a really late day because by the time we had that done, it was like eight or nine o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And um, so getting on it early the next morning, it was a little sticky. You know, you really need to give it, it was tacky. 12 hours or so, but we did it anyways. It was fine. Yeah, so the urethane is a two-part to one-part urethane. Um, this is a pretty simple process, though. You know, you put the Part B in, pour two gallons of A on top of that, and you mix it for three minutes. And it's a, a simple process. It sounds really simple, but it's it's really critical, like we said before, because if they don't mix it, it'll stay sticky on the floor. So once the urethane is mixed, this is a really critical part. Urethane is not easy to put down. We think of putting the urethane down as two separate steps. The first step is just getting it on the floor. So that basically looks like me dipping the roller in the bucket and rolling a W on the floor. Mm -hmm. Then I go back over it and try to spread it. And that's it. It's going to be two passes. W and then spread it evenly. And then the second step, you're going to put the roller down on the floor with not much material on it. 
you put it down on the floor and you roll it forward and as it's rolling forward you pick it up in the air mm. and what that does is that it eliminates that start stop point of a roller because when you push a roller forward and then pull it back it left a build up there and this those are roller mar- that's what a roller mark is is that build up what you're describing right now is one of the biggest things i think the one of the most important things when it comes to picking that roller up it is you should do that on on every urethane job you push it forward and you pick it up as it's moving and what that does is it feathers out mm. the material to where you're not going to have that just build up spot where you stop your roller mm-hmm. and sometimes you'll even i don't know if you're getting ready to talk about this but you will sometimes even back roll yeah i mean if you can't do that if Depends on the type of material that you're using, and it also depends on the environment. So, on Ballast Point, it was really hot in that place, so we didn't have time to do this. But if you have enough time, it's really best to have a guy on, on spike shoes walking from one side of the room to the other, just rolling it from wall to wall. That way, there can't be roller marks. Like, mm-hmm. there's literally no way there could be. So, that's ideal, but we couldn't do that on this one. Right. Especially because it was cut up. We're like working around all these walls for different booths and stuff. Mm-hmm. It was a, you know, a lot going on. Mm-hmm. So once we finished the inside, it was time for us to go ahead and do the outside too. Mm-hmm. Do, I think we did it while we did the inside, but we had to kind of treat it like two different projects because it was different materials out there. Mm-hmm. And we just used a solvent-based sealer out there. Um, this stuff dries almost instantly. You you barely have enough time to do that pickup method, but that was just as simple as us just rolling on two coats out there. Mm-hmm. Super fumey, super kind of nasty stuff. Yeah. You remember the, um, the whole wall was glass and... It was late in the day. The sun was going down. So the sun was kind of low in the sky and it was hitting that glass. I just remember feeling like I was being cooked. Yeah. Because it was like, it was reflecting on the glass. I was worried to death. I was like, how is this going to turn out right? Yeah. I can't believe that that worked because it was, it was hot. The sun was hitting the ground and it's hitting this reflection and hitting the ground too. But mm-hmm. somehow it worked. It didn't bubble or anything. It, it worked out well. Yeah. Well, I think the funny thing too is after we finished that outside, after they were open for a couple of weeks, we got a call back later to, "Hey, can you come back and redo the patio?" Because I was slippery. like, "Well, we did it right the first time." They're like, "I oh, know this is just a new job. You just we just want you to redo it and put grit in it." <laughs> we told them not to do this. Like, it was a brim finished patio, and they had us grind the brim finish off. And we're like, you know that, you know they put the brim finish on there for so it's not slippery, right? Like, oh, it'll be fun. You know, people may have a couple beers to where they might get a little bit off balance. Like, do you think it's really a good, <laughs> is it really a good idea to grind, to smooth out the concrete outside? Yeah. Nice and smooth and slick. No, oh, it'll be fun. We'll just do it. Yeah. So we ended up going back up there and doing another coat of the same stuff. And we put grit in it to give it like a sandpaper finish. Like a lot of grit. Yeah, yeah. a lot of grit. Who knew that a slippery floor at a, at a bar would be a bad idea? <laughs> <laughs> Who knew that a drunk guy couldn't couldn't just slide around <laughs> like he's on skates? Yeah. Okay, while I'm showing you a few finished photos of this project, I just wanted to let you know that we recorded a full podcast about this entire project too. We talked about how we got the job and we talked about all the problems we had to deal with. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link at the end of this video. And I've also been making courses that will teach you exactly how to do some of the things that you've seen on this channel. So if you want more info about that, you can find it at the first link in the description down below. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. It also helps us out a lot if you hit the like button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.